Hello, my name is George Webster and I'm a gastroenterologist and hepatologist at University College Hospital in London. We have a tertiary referral practice in pancreatic and biliary medicine and have developed a particular interest over the last few years in autoimmune pancreatitis. I'd like here to give a brief outline of our study entitled The Presentation and Management of Post-Treatment Relapse in Autoimmune Pancreatitis IgG4 Associated Cholangitis, which is to be published shortly in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Autoimmune pancreatitis, or AIP, was until recently mainly reported from Japan and the Far East, with most patients presenting with a pancreatic mass, obstructive jaundice and raised serum levels of IgG4. It is now recognised that this is a global disease and that the pancreas is just one target of a multi-system fibro-inflammatory condition which affects a range of organs uh, including the biliary tree, the kidneys, lungs and salivary glands. The biliary changes may mimic primary sclerosing cholangitis and have been termed IgG4 associated cholangitis or IAC. An IgG4 positive plasma cell in infiltrate within involved tissues is a characteristic feature of this condition. A favourable response to steroids in AIP has been widely reported but the optimal dose and duration uh, of treatment and the problem of post-steroid relapse has been less well described. And so the aim of our study was to report our experience of disease relapse in AIP and its management. The study was a prospective case series of consecutive patients with AIP who were diagnosed between 2004 and 2008. The diagnosis was based on established criteria including the, pancreatic, the Pancreas Society of Japan and most recently the HISORT criteria from the Mayo Clinic. All patients received an, an initial reducing course of steroids, commencing at prednisolone 30 to 40 milligrams a day, and four treatment outcomes were defined. Firstly, a disease response, in which symptomatic, biochemical and radiological improvement was seen on steroids. Secondly, disease remission, defined as the maintenance of uh, an initial disease response. Thirdly, relapse, defined as the recurrence of symptoms, biochemical abnormalities or radiological changes after initially achieving a remission. And finally, our fourth group were patients who failed steroid weaning, as defined by a flare of disease whilst tapering treatment. In our results, 28 patients were studied of whom 82% had biliary involvement or IAC at the time of diagnosis. All patients showed a favourable initial response within six weeks of starting steroids and remission was achieved in 82% after completing a median of five months of treatment. Five patients failed weaning and of the 23 patients who achieved remission disease relapse occurred in eight. Therefore, overall, relapse or failed weaning occurred in 46% of our patient group. Extra pancreatic disease appeared to predict relapse, which occurred in 50%, 56% of patients with associated biliary disease, but in none of those with isolated pancreatic disease. There was a trend towards failure to normalise previously raised serum IgG4 being predictive of relapse, but this did not reach statistical significance. In the 13 patients who relapsed or failed weaning, prednisolone at a dose of 20 to 30 milligrams daily was recommenced, and 10 patients received additional azathioprine at, an, at a dose uh, of 2 milligrams per kilogram per day. Disease control was again achieved and seven patients remained on azathioprine monotherapy at a median of 13 months. There are clearly limitations of this study. 
like all reports of treatment of autoimmune pancreatitis to date, this study was not randomised or placebo controlled and patient numbers were relatively small. Yet we believe that the results raise a few useful questions. As previously shown, steroids appear to be effective initial treatment, but relapse is common. Should we be applying the lessons that are now well established in autoimmune hepatitis, in which prolonged immunosuppression as maintenance therapy is required? Should this approach uh, particularly apply to those with autoimmune pancreatitis with a particular high risk of relapse, such as those with extra pancreatic disease, including uh, biliary involvement. Uh, is azathioprine the optimal additional immunosuppressant, or should we be considering others, or perhaps uh, more prolonged use of low-dose steroids? So in summary, we have shown that disease relapse occurs in nearly 50% of patients with autoimmune pancreatitis, despite a favourable initial response to steroid therapy. Biliary involvement and other extra pancreatic disease seems to, be, uh, seems to uh, predict relapse, and azathioprine seems to be effective in establishing and maintaining further remission. Nevertheless, there's much still to learn, about this only quite recently defined disease and the timing, choice and duration of longer term immunosuppression merits further study. Thank you very much.